Hey guys, welcome to episode two of Ask the HF Trainer. I want to answer some of the questions that I got asked this week. Uh, the first one is by Steve. He asks, Shane, what would you choose and why? Either a missed workout or a missed meal. And if your week becomes too hectic, what part are you more likely to flex on, training or diet? Well, it's something that I, um, that I thought about for a while, trying to answer this question. And I think it depends on a few different variables. The first thing I need to ask, you know, where has my training been for the week? So if I've had a couple of training sessions that haven't been um, the best or I haven't fully optimized the hour that I've had, um, I'll put my workout before my meal in that respect. If there's something that I need to work on, um, say it's a skill or it's something that I just feel I'll get a lot of value out of in a session, then I'll definitely do my workout over my meal. That being said, some days um, I have to ask myself the same question, should I miss training because I only had four of my five meals before I train. So normally I'll have a breakfast, a shake, three more meals before training, train and then dinner. Um, so if I haven't had those three meals before training, sometimes I can feel really low in energy and then I have to say, well, if I'm going to be not as uh, on point with my training, so if I'm going to have to not put as much effort into my training, maybe it's best for me to use it as a recovery day and skip the training session um, and have my meal and fully recover so that I have enough energy for the following session that I may do. But it really does depend on the day and depends on kind of what I've been doing and how the week's been looking. Uh, really good question, Steve. Thanks for asking. Um, if your week becomes hectic, what part are you more likely to flex on? Yeah, if I've got a hectic week, been busy, like I've got a lot of work on, a lot of clients on, a lot of stuff going uh, going on, I would probably yeah, flex on, on food. Um, only because I probably find that that training will be a stress release for me. So if my week is hectic, then I definitely try not to miss any training because it's the only way I really feel good about myself in, in that sort of sense. Um, and so I won't want to miss my session. And I'll find that all the other little things that I'm dealing with in my life will be a lot harder to deal with if I haven't trained. So food, I can just skip a meal here and try and make up for it after, after training. Thanks, Steve. Good question. The next one is Megan. She asked, Shane, how much time would you spend a week on all the administration of running CrossFit HF? How do you keep up with all the paperwork, newsletters, new clients, programming, etc.? I'm sure it takes up a lot of your time. Thanks, Megan. Good question. Uh, it takes uh, my whole week. Uh, I can't really give you a number, Megan, because I would say that it takes every single day. I'll probably spend, oh, I don't know, like definitely like 10 hours, 12 hours of actual physical mind on the business, uh, head in some sort of computer, doing something, either Facebook is constant, Facebook is 24 seven, emails are 24 seven, text messages I get back to my clients all day, every day. I don't have a restriction on, well, I mean, I have a sort of respect thing, but I don't have a restriction on when people will contact me and I'll get back to them as soon as I can. There's no real, uh, we're closed for business um, after 5 p.m. It's If a client messages me, then I get back to them. So when I take into account all of that, um, I can't give you an exact time, but it's just something that I love to do. So it's not really like I'm going, oh, I've only got four more hours of work. It's Today's been a lot busier than others because I had uh, an extra four hours of email to do, an extra three hours of paperwork. Uh, the part I hate the most, if I was to hate it, would be the sitting in the office part. Um, every quarter I spend four to five hours just simply on like just spreadsheets, um, which isn't a lot of time considering, but it does take up a fair chunk of my month or my quarter. Um, so yeah, that stuff, newsletters I do once a month. That only takes about an hour to draft up a newsletter to <laughs> edit it to the best of my ability without Adam proofreading it. Um, and so stuff like that, little photos on Facebook, they, they take like 45 minutes per section. So if I'm putting a video up or um, putting photos together and, and, and putting them on Facebook for you guys, it will only take about 30 minutes to 20 minutes to get all that done, content done, some stuff to write about something and to make it look good. Uh, so cool, that's probably about the amount of time I spend on that, Megan. Um, programming takes hours. Programming, yeah. So you were asked about programming. Programming takes, uh, that's probably the longest part um, of the week in one hit. That takes about three hours, two to three hours. If I'm repeating the week at the moment in regards to uh, part A, it doesn't shorten it all that much because I really try and uh, twist part B and part C to work with what we were doing the following week or the previous week. 
So it still takes about two hours as a bare minimum. Um, and if I'm having some trouble in regards to making it flow, it'll take an extra hour. So that's about three hours is, is not uncommon for programming. Um, I do it week to week simply because I don't find in the last eight years, I don't find that programming massive chunks of training works for anybody that isn't an elite, absolute sports specific individual. Um, I think the general basis of CrossFit doesn't really revolve around that extended period of programming. I think we get the best results from um, looking at what we've been doing and modifying it on the flow in regards to every seven days and making sure we're making modifications as soon as we need to rather than having a set program that can really take us away from where we might want to be going. There is an idea and understanding and we do programming with intent, but um, yeah, it's not like 12 weeks mapped out. It's week to week as well. Brown, what are some of your goals um, that the trainers are working towards? Obviously, uh, my goal is to, my personal goal, my specific goal, if I was to write it down, it would be to increase the amount of muscle mass that I have um, and decrease the amount of body fat that I have. Second to that is an absolute performance goal. I wanna be able to still do muscle ups, rope climbs, still wanna be able to do handstand push-ups, handstand walks, all things CrossFit. Um, but my first and fundamental goal is, is probably more of a vanity goal in regards to muscle mass, muscle size, and to be as lean as possible. Um, I feel that, that really motivates me to train, but at the same time, a very close second is my performance goal. I need to make sure that I'm not falling behind. I can't sacrifice um, my performance for those goals, I, I just wouldn't and I won't. So they're both very, very close. So they're the goals I'm working towards. Strength is always on there. I think as a CrossFit athlete, we all want to get stronger, but again, we can't sacrifice our CrossFit ability or our, our endurance and our stamina to be too strong. Otherwise, we'd start dabbling in powerlifting as a sport more so than anything. Um, and to the third goal, Joe, at the moment this week, as you probably know, is flexibility. I need to make sure that I'm improving in my flexibility. It's a huge flaw in my athletic performance or athletic ability is my um, crappy flexibility. So we've been working hard on that every night. I mean, as challenging as getting flexibility is, I'm sure we'll be able to make improvements even with small amounts of, uh, of training each night. None. Belinda wrote, if you can't out train a bad diet, how do you recover when you have a cheat meal? Uh, Belinda, that's a really good question. Um, they say you can't out train a bad diet. I think it's just one of those things that people say in regards to like, you can't out train a bad diet. Okay, if you, you can't, if you're having a bad diet all the time, um, but a cheat meal really isn't, I, I don't think a cheat meal is a bad diet per se. Like I don't think that if you have a cheat meal that's considered that you have a bad diet. If you have one meal where it is considered a cheat meal, um, I wouldn't say it's a bad diet. You can't out train a bad diet in regards to every single day, it being bad, but if you just have that one meal, not not once a week, maybe like once a fortnight, maybe once a month, have a date where you have decided that that's the day you'll have a cheat meal, and I think you can easily recover from that. And if anything, it might actually be beneficial for not only your sanity, but to replenish you and give you that little kickstart you may need or that motivation to then do your next phase of training. So a uh, little thing I tell some of my clients is that every say three weeks or two weeks to have a cheat meal of their choice. You can have whatever you like, um, as long as it's a very, uh, it's just a meal and not a whole day and not a whole week. And only if you ha you're someone with gears. And what I mean by that is if you're all or nothing, um, some people just can never have a cheat meal because it sends them backwards far too much. Some people who have gears can swap from being focused on their meals and being focused on their goals and achieving that and then going and having one cheat meal. And then the next day or the next meal, getting straight back on their plan. And some people would do well with that, but not everybody has that ability. Some people will just come crashing down and, and go backwards for, for many days if they have a cheat meal. So it's not, not good for those guys to do that. So, um, I mean, I guess specifically for your question, if you can't out train a bad diet, how do you recover when you have a cheat meal? I think it helps you recover, helps you keep sane, and it's not really reflective of your diet if it's just one meal. So, hope that answers your question, Belinda. Um, good question, I love those sorts of questions, they're cool. What else do we have? That's everything, I think. Thanks so much for your questions, guys. Uh, it's been really fun this week answering them. 
You guys keep asking questions and we'll keep answering uh, hi them. Hi guys, just my little vid for this week, week two of the questions. Uh, thanks also for your question. She asked um, how I managed to fit in my training with all of my um, stuff that I have going on. Um, for you guys that don't come to all of my 9.30 sessions or haven't come across me at the gym, um, my name is Ivana and I teach the Thursday and Friday 9.30 classes. Um, I'm also a mum of four, um, a wife, uh, I run, I'm trying to build up my own PT business and I run my husband's business, um, which is a medium sized business and I do all the back work at home. Um, and you know, it also wanted to know how I can fit in my training all of the time. Um, with all of that on my plate. Um, you know what, I'm not going to lie and say, oh, you know, I, it's really easy and I just come to the gym all the time. It is really challenging and sometimes um, I don't make it because of certain things in life, but the way that I try to make it is I try and schedule my training as though it's a part-time job. So I schedule a routine every week of when I try and come in, or when I, can, when I will come into the gym and when I will do my training. I try and utilize my time whilst I'm at the gym as best as I can. I'm, I'm not gonna say that I'm time poor because I have just as many hours in the day as everyone else, but I most definitely really need to think about how I spend my time and use my time really wisely. I live in Silverdale, so I commute a fair bit. I think I do about a thousand kilometers on my car a week with taking the kids to and fro and coming to the gym and to all of their sports um, activities and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, why is it challenging sometimes? Well, because things happen in life that you just can't control. And, and one thing that I have noticed and I'm, when I don't come to the gym and when I um, miss sessions for whatever reason, everything else kind of in life starts to kind of go a little bit crazy. And that's because of my why. My why for coming to the gym and doing my own training is purely survival. You know, I'm not a competitive person and I don't aspire to get to the regionals one day or to be the strongest woman in the gym or, or, or any of those really big kind of goals. But my, my why is just to come to the gym, just to survive and to get through the rest of the day. I find that when I do train, I eat better. I've got my lamb shanks on now. I'm just starting them in the slow cooker. I sleep better. I'm a happier person. I'm easier to live with. I can manage all of the rest of my load that I've got on going on. Uh, so I hope that has um, helped and I know it's a really quick answer and I could sit here for a really long time and, and go through a whole history of how I got to where I am and how I manage my time. Um, but, you know, I could be here for hours. So I hope that helps and I hope that answers your question. Um, and, you know, it's something that's always really challenging. I think as a mum, you have to be prepared to be thrown in the deep end and sink or swim. And, and one thing that I have definitely learned is that when I am sinking, it makes me stop, have a think, pre prioritise all of my jobs, duties, and, and then start again and find out what's most important to me. So if you have any more questions or you see me also and it's not enough and you want me to elaborate more, please ask me to do so. I'd be more than happy to. Um, and there was another question from Nathan about what's my most, what was my most inspirational moment as a trainer. Um, I was thinking about that in the car while I was driving because I drive so much and it's where I do all of my thinking. Um, there's, there were so many moments that came to my mind. And the one thing that they all had in common was, it was when I helped someone reach a certain goal or, or taught someone something that they had been trying to get for such a long time and they get it. And that's like one of those little perks of the job where you go, oh, yeah, I was a part of that. Um, a big one that comes to mind is I had a client who, um, I'd been training him in the gym for a little while and I kind of noticed that he was getting really flat. So I took him out of the gym and I took him to a park and I thought maybe a change of scenery would be something that he needed. And um, lo and behold, it was exactly what he needed, but more, more so than the training, we just spoke a lot that session. And you know, it's not, doing a PT is not always about physical. Um, physical training it sometimes it's just a mental thing we spoke so much that day and he kind of i was i was so proud when i walked away that i was a, i was there for a part of his life where he realized that oh that's what's holding me back here and this and and so sometimes it just takes someone to retell you your own story for you to see things from a different perspective and, and which which happened that day and he had like a bit of a ha moment 
um, with the priorities in his life and, and, and saw that everything wasn't doom and gloom and there was a way out. And that was such a big thing for me. It's such a big kick to see that you help someone. Um, and that definitely inspires me to keep going and to keep coaching and to keep, keep helping people that I can. Um, so I hope that answers your question, Nath. Um, I'm going to keep going with my, my lay machine. So off to a soccer game in a little bit and um, juggle the rest of my day. And I will see you guys in the gym. Thank you. Okay. Um, just answering Nathan's um, question, which is about um, what was your most inspirational moment as a trainer. So I was thinking about that, and it's really hard to pinpoint one particular moment. There's been so many over the years, um, so many um, occasions that I've seen people push you know, past what they you know would have expected from themselves. But that's probably the big thing is um, I find I get really emotional seeing that um, that response in somebody. Um, you know, it's it's exciting to see somebody you know in a comp or in a, in a ward or whatever. Um, you know, just pushing past what they thought they could actually do. So, you know, seeing them get that bit of extra confidence from that um, is is really good. It makes makes your job feel really worthwhile when you see see somebody achieve things like that. You know, it's really good. Um, yeah, and in terms of w working with clients, obviously, just day to day, um, there's all sorts of people that walk in walk into the gym. So you get people that have come from fitness backgrounds, which you know transfer over to CrossFit really well. And you get people that walk in the door that have never done any sort of fitness before in their life. And I find that group of people um, really inspiring. Um, and I enjoy working working, um, working alongside them and just seeing what a change, you know, increasing your fitness can do to your self-esteem, to your confidence, everything like that. So um, too many moments to, make, to name. But, um, yeah, overall it's, um, yeah, every, everyone's very inspiring. Okay, next question was Joe's question about... Um, what our goals as trainers are at the moment. Um, so mine will probably be a bit different than the other trainers currently as I'm sort of out with injury at the moment, just short term. Um, so until that's um, all fixed up, um, I'm a bit restricted with training. So I'm just um, focusing on other areas. Um, obviously coaching classes and PT um, is is a big is a big focus and I'm finding that um, really interesting at the moment. Um, it's you know it's something good to come from being the observer. Um, I found that sort of in in recent times. Um, yeah, being on the other side of the, of the fence, it's interesting as a trainer to um, observe. It's 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 different than you know we usually we're, we're you know quite often we're, we're in it we're in the in the class and whatnot. So just standing back and just observing how pe people are doing amazing things and um, seeing people's improvement. And just observing that rather than being in it has, is, I think, really be really beneficial and you learn a lot from it. So that's been good. Um, focusing a little bit more on just, um, I suppose, acceptance, acceptance of situations, um, acceptance of um, what you can and can't do. Um, I think sometimes it's really energy draining to, um, you know, I suppose it you know, refers to all sorts of things in life, but when we um, sort of push against something that... Um, Maybe maybe currently is meant to be like you know training around an injury or trying to train through an injury. Um, it's you know it's quite frustrating. So I think it can be really energy draining. So sometimes just redirecting your focus for a short time um, can be a good thing. Whether it's you know a different body part to train or whether it's um, you know focusing on rehab, mobility, all that type of thing. There's so many different facets that you can focus on without sort of going in and um, thrashing yourself every week. So um, yeah, I'm sort of finding that. So it's a big learning curve, um, but it's good. We learn, we learn every day, so that's the beauty of it. So, um, yeah, that's sort of where I'm at with that. So just answering Belinda's question about out-training a bad diet. So we all sort of know that we can't out-train a bad diet. We could be in the gym three times a day, every day, and come home and eat lemmingtons, and um, it wouldn't get you to your goals. I mean, it might maintain maintain um, your fitness um, and your physique or whatever for a short period, but um, getting gains is not going to happen doing it like that. So... Um, you know, we have to be mindful if we're wanting to improve. So um, probably the biggest advice that I've learned definitely is just being kinder to yourself. So if you slip up, um, don't sort of berate yourself too much. Um, we're all human. It all happens. I mean, that's life. There's so many temptations around us. Um, and sometimes if we let our, our goals sort of slip our minds, um, then it happens. So, yeah, just be kind to yourself. Get back on track as soon as you can. Make sure you stay hydrated. Hydration's a big thing. I think if you're hydrated, then you are um, you don't have that hungry feeling um, as well. So hydration, uh, making sure your nutrition's on track the following days, and, and moving, obviously. I think they go hand in hand, um, training and 
your nutrition if one of them is lacking then the other one's sort of harder to keep or keep up as well so um try to move hydrate nutrition on track and if you're sort of finding that you do need a bit of a reset um a nutritional cleanse or, um a naturopathic cleanse I've found, I've found in the past have been really good just to detoxify and um, start afresh. So that could help as well. Hey, CrossFit. Hey, Jeffers. Coach Matt here with uh, round two of Ask the Trainer. A um, few questions to knock over. The uh, first one was from Joe that I'll answer. What are the trainer's goals? What are we working towards? Um, for me, I've got a few sort of at the moment. Um, I'm... At the moment, I'm trying to get over a bit of a niggling back twinge. So that sort of is my goal, to get sort of uh, working and moving well again. Um, and hopefully that'll be uh, sweet for in time for the teams of Ernie and Wright. I'm uh, currently signed up for that. So that sort of is my goal, uh, to improve my engine for that. Um, as well as I've had a, a fairly tough couple of months lately, so my other goal is just working on me in relation to stress and uh, and and relaxing a bit more, and, and especially with my work stress at the moment. So uh, and sorting that out. So that's probably the first one. The second question from Nathan is, uh, what's been our most inspirational moment as trainers? Um, You'll probably get, I guess, similar answers to this one, but uh, uh, I'll be a little bit selfish in that for me, uh, it's probably, I can't give you specific sort of moments. Um, there's been a few people where I probably could, but more so where people turn around and go, oh, I can't do that. Um, when they say, oh, I can't do that, and then I get to give them a bit of a push, um, and, and usually I'll take them where I'm, I'm, I know or I'm confident they are, they are going to be able to do something, whether it be handstand push-ups with uh, less pads underneath them or a thinner band for muscle-ups or for pull-ups or even just a tough workout. Um, for me, then, the there is a look on their face, on people's faces, when they say, I can't do that, and then turn around and look at you after they've just done it, that um, makes it all worthwhile, man. Um, that's pretty much one of the reasons that uh, I love training people. Um, same goes for when I'm doing PT with someone and I, and I program, say, a tough workout, and they look at it and go, oh, you know, I can see the look on their face of I'm not going to be able to get through that, and then they, they make it through and... Um, for me, that's that's the inspiration to keep going, um, you know. And it's usually people you don't expect, or or it doesn't have to be, you know, that that five hundred kilo deadlift. It just has to be someone who uh, who surprises themselves. And um, for me, that's the best. Last question I'll address from Gary. Gary asked, um, "Do I think my bodybuilding backgrounds helped transfer over for CrossFit?" Uh, the short answer is yes. Uh, for me. Um, but that's not to rule out that other things like um, gymnastics or if uh, if you've got an Olympic weightlifting background or, um, you know, even if you're an endurance athlete, there's going to be some transfer over to uh, CrossFit. In terms of my bodybuilding, um, I think that uh, it's helped strengthen my connective tissue, so ligaments and tendons. Um, what I found is it gave me experience under a heavy bar, so... Uh, whether it be squats, whether it be some of those Olympic lifts, you know, having a heavy bar overhead, that definitely helped. Um, I could talk on this one all day, to be honest, about sort of the transfer of different things into CrossFit, but um, one of the negatives was it took me a while to change technique. So because I was used to just moving weight around um, with relatively little technique compared to some of the Olympic lifts, then... You know, I was, uh, for me, I wasn't utilising my whole body, um, you know, and, and that push for CrossFit to be functional. Um, I wasn't utilising my whole body in the Olympic lifts. So it took a while to learn that technique, but, um, yeah, the strength sort of helped. Um, my biggest piece of advice would be that the, the best transfer over is going to be someone who looks after their core, whatever they're doing, mobility, um, stretching, all those things keep your body uh, 
keep your body well and healthy, and um, that that'll put you in the best stead. Um, you know, some of the the younger guys at the gym that I see, I really uh, hope they look after their body in terms of mobility and and um, mobility and stretching and all those things. And and I think it'll pay off massively in dividends later on when you're um, trying to push even further. Um, so that's it from me, HFers. Um, as always, if you uh, want to have a further chat about any of this stuff, um, send me a message or hit me up down at the gym. Um, and I'll see you at 7pm. See you later.